Today we're going to talk about the cloudy days model and how it can benefit you. But there are some caveats that we need to understand so then it doesn't trip you up. So here we have the farm dashboard. What we can do is come up to the readings, open up the readings. Now we can see the readings on this farm. So 14th of July, 10th of July, 8th, 5th, 3rd of July. So if we click on the 14th of July, now I know this is a cloudy days model. Now the reason I know this is because that there is no satellite image underneath this date here. So if I go back a day, I can see that there is satellite imagery here. So if I click on NDVI, we can see that there is a satellite image that we can now assess. So if I go forwards, I can see the cloudy days model doesn't have any satellite imagery. If I go back a few dates, we can see that there is uh, satellite images. Now the cloudy days model doesn't utilize satellites. So it has no view off the ground. It purely relies on local weather data as well as paddock activities such as grazing events. So without the satellite image, there is nothing to then correct the cloudy days model. Now this is where people can get tripped up. So it's important to understand that the cloudy days model is there to help smooth out the variations between satellite measurements. But then if there aren't any grazing activities, then the cloudy days model has its own limitations. So it's a pretty important piece of the puzzle to understand and one that is makes the remote pasture measurements all the more special so you get these all these satellite pasture measurements coming in every week and then in in the case that you have a cloudy week then you are supported by a cloudy days model which is very robust and smooths smooths out all of that variation